All right, hello everybody. It is the last day that the cons cube is around because it's literally around for one week. What, is, what the heck? Come on. So we're gonna give it one more run. Uh, that's that's today's plan. So yeah, we are, we are here to uh, to to cube. So yeah, uh, for those who didn't catch uh, the early one or don't know what the cons cube is, the cons expanded cube is uh, a cube designed to take the ideas of cons of Tarkir and enlarge them. Uh, so that they are, so that you can more readily draft, you know, self-mill, delve, prowess, all sorts of things like this. Uh, oh, MC Subtle, thank you very much for the sub. Let's go ahead and get things rolling. Uh, the draft queue might take us a little while. It is the last day, so. I don't think they'll change Morph. I think Morph is a three-mana 2-2 two -two forever. All right. All right, so we already have some people in the queue. That's good. One moment here. Okay, that's better. All right, so yeah. I don't know, like, they... I don't think they'll change Morph ever from being a 3 mana 2-2 two -two because that's what a Morph is, is it's a 3 mana 2-2. Two -two. I don't know. Like, obviously, a Grey Ogre hasn't been good without text for Unlimited for quite some time. But it is something you can try to design your set around. It's hard. But, you know. Anyway, so, as I mentioned, Cons Cube, last time we did some uh, Red Blue Prowess Jeskai Way stuff, with uh, a little bit of green in there. This time, who knows? Um, we'll try to look for some big signals and then follow whatever seems to be the flow. So, I would love to see Exalted Angel. Uh, that would just be strong, and I love Exalted Angel. It has fake lifelink. Uh, all right, we've got Mantis Rider, Elshav. What does this one do? 3-3 three, three Prowess, you can cast. Okay, not creature on lands, does it? And Flash. Um, we've got Goreclaw, which is pretty strong. Debilitating Injury. Uh, we have some strong three-color things immediately. Teamer Charm, Mantis Rider, Elshaw of the Infinite. Uh, is there a way to give it lifelink on this? I believe so. With the 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 these things. There's the the cleric that if it has plus one plus one counters. I don't know. So is debilitating injury going to be good enough in this format? Yeah, known human tribal card. I think it should be okay. It's a, it was a lot better in like a morph format, and this might be a little too powerful for it. But this was a first pick in cons, so I'm gonna lean on it being a first pickable card here. We'll see if that's true or not. Anyway, um, above here we got a lot of Jeskai Death Grasp. Ooh, I love Death Grasp. Uh, this is a Drain Life for X. Uh, Doomfall, this one's pretty good. This is a Exile Edict or Exile from their hand. Um, mm, if we could get, like, Ramp going, Death Grasp looks very good. Otherwise, Jeskai Sage is also very powerful. Um, Doomfall keeps us in black and is just fine against anything that isn't, like, Tokens wide things. 
you know, Talran, again, like, the prowess deck, I, I specifically avoided picking something up like the, the Mantis Rider immediately, just because we did that last time. So I wanted to try a different direction. Clearly there is a deck there. I'm gonna go with the Doomfall and see if maybe Deathgrasp makes it around. Under of the Dusk Rose, what do you do? Blue creature dies, plus one, plus one counter, and then a bunch of white, white vampires. Volcano! Okay. Okay, if I pick up Crater's Claws, where do we want to go from there? Mardu Agro? Expunge is good. Harm's Way is busted. This card is unreal. This card is absolutely, like... Holy crap, this card is unreal for one white. Uh, you talk about the power Shock has. This is so much more. Um, I think we go Crater's Claws here. That puts us in Mardu, but it also is splashable if we end up in something else. I like Expunge as well. This is very good because its removal hits anything. And if you're in a mirror match of sorts, you can just cycle it. Okay, Crater's Claws. Thrasher Brute. Whenever a Thrasher Brute or another Warrior enters the battlefield under your team's control, Tar opponent loses life and you gain a life. Okay, so this is Warrior Liker. That's good. Uh, Silk Wrap is removal for small CMC things. Um, Obzot's Aid is the pickup. Dragon Style Twins, Ashcraft Phoenix. Red looking good. Uh, I want to keep cutting black at the moment because black is our main color. And then pick up on the red as it passes by here, is what I'm going to do. Actually, I have Phoenix is a good thing, and it also turns on this. I want this Thrasher Brute. This seems like a good aggro piece. Turns on the Claws. Collective Effort. Mario Charm. Wrong Volver. Filigree Familiar is the most filler thing in the world. Mario Charm. Makes warriors. Like a lot of this. Also, this is super strong. Like the Mardu charm here. I also like Feet of Resistance. I like Filigree Familiar. Burn Away is fine. Necrovolver is a... Yeah, you can kick both. Uh, Caves of Koilos. Whoa! Whoa, 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 Um, so in, um, oof, in cons, there were some cards that were hyperbombs. Size Sentinels of Arashian was a hyperbomb. This is good for the Outlast deck, it's good for us, it's good for being a... Three mana, three, four flyer. Like, I want this for a lot of reasons. That's a little, we find what's that, I, I think, or, or caves. But we have our, our colors. Carol the Man of Fenza. What does the mob do? Nah, it's not as interesting. Let's get the Herald. This makes warrior tokens again, going with our Thrasher Brute. Uh, the 1-1 one -one counters goes with High Sentinels. Yo. Harold seems fun. Uh, also, so Harold, uh, you know, when you activate... Okay, it's not on getting the 1-1 one -one counter. Good to know. Light form? Ooh, Mardu Woe Reaper? Yeah, Ghastly Demise? Okay. Whoa. Hold on. I'm sorry, this is murder. Yeah, this looks like it has some sort of drawback, but it doesn't. This is murder. Except for better, because it could draw some cards. Sorry, Lightform. Sorry, Woe Reaper. Sorry, Roast. 
Um, Abzan Falcon are making it back around, looking really good for us. That's a strange one. Master of Pearls. I like Falconer because that gives flying off. Uh, Goblin War Marshal pretty be cool too. Uh, I'm gonna go with the Falconer. I like flying a lot, even though this is a team pump. Anyone with the wall The only question is, did they put Goblin Slide in this cube? Yeah, I'm pretty certain it is. Okay. I mean, That's really good. Also, hello. Hello. Right now, we've got a... Uh, what we're looking at is like a Mardu... More specifically, the, the white... Uh, what does Foundry Champion do? Sure. I feel like most of these cards are fictitious. Where some some of them stuff? are. <laughs> Some of them are like Thrasher Brute. Uh, it's a fake card. All right. Um. Okay, so it looks like white and black are our main two colors, and then red has some powerful, you know. That's a that's a pretty good place to be. It's the overlap between the Mardu and uh, Abzan wedges. Yeah. So we might be able to go in either direction. And even glad to see Av <laughs> that six four. <laughs> oh my. <God. laughs> that uh, that poor Timur big boy. Yeah. He always, he always he he runs laps. That's his job. He just that's, laps that the is, table. That is what that card single. does. Whatever context he's in. All right, so uh, looking around here, we've got uh, that's the manifest. This thing is a army and a can maker. Kind of stunned it's in here, to be honest. Marty Hordchef, uh, Castigate, War Name, Aspirant, um, and below the cut is a Swift Water. Cliff's not for us. Yeah, Necropolis Fiend, also a card that uh, makes the laps delving for quite that much, makes him basically uncastable, and then he demands more of your graveyard if you ever want to activate instead of attacking with your flying 4-5. or five. Every, every aspect of this card's design is slightly offensive to me. I, I was so annoyed to find out that the answer to why is that card Necropolis Fiend instead of Tombstalker is we forgot. <laughs> like, that was the legit answer. <laughs> Was <laughs> we forgot What's Tombstalker? Oh right, <laughs> we don't play the game that we like create, man. There's there's no time in the day left for that. Ooh, the Monastery Master Mentor. Mm. Okay, want to shout out this pack a lot? Monastery mm. Mentor, Alicia who smiles at death, mm. Smiting Helix, which is an incredible card if you have the flashback for it, because that's Dang. six. That's six points of reach. Uh, Kite Sail Freebooter does a lot of work. Uh, right now, we actually do have a lot of non-creature bits. If you only have one prowess card in your entire deck, uh, that's that's pretty dope. Yeah, man, we got this. Would be our second army in a can. Uh, kind of, yeah. So, Master of the Unseen, I picked here because it's just manifest oh, top card of your deck. Anafenza makes our you know one one tokens. High Sentinels of Arashin puts one one counters on things. We have a lot of mana sinks. We're not gonna have a lot of problem. Also, this pack has one, two, three, four, five, six cards I'd be willing to pick out of it. Like Alright. Okay, a lot of choices here. Uh Hidden Dragon Slayer, Chainers Edict. Flame so like slash. I mentioned, we, we do have some uh, we do have some Mardu cards so yeah. far, but here are two Abzan cards showing up. Abzan Charm is at least uh, real good. Yeah, Exile with three or lower uh, or three or greater. I don't think it want. I don't think it really pushes me into that. That's ch just Chainer's Edict. That is just Chainer's Edict, and honestly, like you know, with Mentor and like. Things like that. That's that's good I think stuff. A flashback card in your monastery mentor deck sounds kind of sickening. Yeah, 
Flashback for sevens a lot, but you two get there. Games go long. I'm fine having, again, I'm also fine picking up more removal. It is also, again, as you say, worth noting, the as we see them, the Abzan cards. Ooh. Okay, I'm not super worried about them anymore. Yeah. Uh, I'm sad that that's competing with a shambling vent. Uh, but I, this is the type of card that, like, us in Black White Warriors, you know, you know, we're gonna have a lot of warriors just as a side effect of the color, you know? <laughs> uh, remind me what Myth Realized does. I remember the name of that card, but nothing else about it. Uh, Prowess puts a counter on it. Three put a counter on it. One creature with power toughness equal to counters on it. Another mana sink style card. Uh. Okay, and at the end of the day, you just get a creature? Yes. No evasion. Just... I mean, I guess he dodges sorcery speed removal, kind of. Yep. Um... The Mardu Ascendancy, if you really want to get there. <laughs> That's like a goblin slide. Yeah, I mean, that does make goblins for <laughs> us. Uh, this gives us a castigate to back up the one we didn't pick. Um... It's not a multicolor spell in case that ever matters. I don't think it will. This is a 4-4 four, four uh, flyer for 5 with text. Uh, this is 5 damage to a creature. Taking a blocking creature. There's a lot of choices in here that are strong. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. No joke. Kind of like, again... It's, it's tough. Like... I feel like we have beef, so oh. maybe we don't. I, I see the high sentinels there. You can just have any ascendancy you want. You can ascend yeah. as any tribe. Uh, this is a card I'm super picking up here. Arashin's foremost hands off double strike on come in or attack. They're a titan. Uh, yes, they're they're a two two. There, wow. I think the closest comparator to this is um, Silverblade, the Soul Bond Double Striker. Okay, well, th I mean, this is better than that because you're not embarrassed to just run it out on turn three. Yeah. Oh, what do we got here? <laughs> Campaign of Vengeance. <laughs> How many, how many, like, of these style of attacks do we need before we're, like, over... Damn, sadly, I was kind of hoping we could pick up some of the fixing here. We could have had something like seven anthems and no creatures. It would be great. Yeah. We could have a, a creatureless deck, just all manifests. I'm not super convinced we're red just yet. Yeah, that's the reason I'm not... Like, pick Omen of the Forge. And there's our... And, you know, I think it's cute that Omen, Omen of the Forge kills a morph. Ugh. Sagu Mauler. What? So, so what? One, one thing we found is that... Uh, so, in, in, um, in pack one, black and white were very open from our right. It mm -hmm. seems that... Teamer is very open from our left. This is not the this is not the return pack. We would have noted anyway. Haunted Dead, I'm fine here because this is like two bodies and a thing to do with extra lands late. My my brain is just not calibrated for this arrangement of cards in a limited format. Okay. To imagine Sagu Mauler going this late, I don't I don't think that's I right. I just don't understand. So we got Castigator Horde Chef. Horde Chef would be a warrior, yeah? A double warrior, even. Oh, wow. A warrior that makes a warrior? Yeah. Uh, Castigate gives us a line we don't have at the moment. Um, the, the theory being that we can pick up warriors later. Uh, yeah. I mean, the Horde Chief is kind of good. Yeah, I'm going to like, grab the Horde we Chief. Would, we do have twos that we would want to attack with. Right? Yes. Like, like the Kite Tail Freebooter. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I, I kind of like the Freebooter almost a little more than Alicia because I feel like I want this deck almost to be mono. Uh, like, sorry, cutting the red out for, like, one card. All right, Alicia's I'm great. I'm trying to Don't cut the red wrong. out. Not for, not out of, like, spite or anything. I just, 
I want a more consistent deck. We yeah. have no fixing. Yeah, don't get me. Yeah, that's the actual problem. Don't get me wrong. Alicia is extremely good. Okay, here's another warrior. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and assume the red isn't so much of a splash. We're not gonna be caring about it. Hmm. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh wow! I didn't read this for the first time. Oh Whoa. yeah, Whoa. I was I was gonna ask about that, but thanks. You know he could attack to any yeah. raid. So can blood soaked <laughs> champion. Hmm. All right, this feels good. I'm feeling like we're in a reasonable uh, position, and there could be a. Oh, uh, oh! I'm. I was like a yeah. little behind. Uh, yep. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Sorry to, nope. to be obnoxious. No, that's 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 mine to fix. All right. So here we have we we have a picket concealed courtyard, which is our black white fixing. We have a picket Mardu skull hunter, valorous stance, and a couple other reasonably powerful cards. I feel like we probably do want to pick up some fixing to make this deck a little bit more consistent. That's just, you know, like, you know, say we like this. I don't is see anything like compelling over that, really, like maybe Valorous Stance, but. Yeah, Valorous Stance yeah. and Skull Hunter are my two in this I like. Skull Hunter will come back. No one wants him. Soulfire Grandmaster? <clears throat> Did we end up getting that uh, <laughs> Lightning Helix card? No, it didn't table <laughs> like Sally. I wanted it very... It, like, not gonna lie, that was my number two out of that pack. Like, mm. And that was like next to, I think, Monastery freaking Mentor, so... We can pick up Blood Crypt if we want the red fixing to work out for our Crater's Claws. Soulfire Grandmaster lets, gives us buyback on spells for Red Red 2. And is a 2 2 lifelink. Um, which is not bad in and of itself. I think this. I, think I would kind of want the Blood Crypt more than that, yeah. I guess. That's that's hard. Like Blood Crypt is fetchable too if we ever get one of those. Yeah, I feel like that's actually the we this is probably where so right now, this deck right here, everything I've highlighted, twenty three cards. So we could kinda this is like the upgrade pack, you know? Where we decide we want crackling do more uh Wow, it's competing with literal nothing, huh? Darn. <laughs> <laughs> The side grade pack. I don't. I don't hate crackling doom. It's an edict that deals damage. That might that's be hard to cast. It's this bizarrely targeted edict. I feel like crackling doom is one of those cards that makes your opponent read it a bunch. It also kind of looks like a Boris Vallejo painting. Mmm. I mean, all it needs is like a a woman made out of chrome, and then it would just it would be. That man. Wait. That's the same one we already. So there's a. Wait. Okay. So to add. Bug report. So to add to your just general confusion of what this is, um, there is an issue with cubes of not 540 cards, where MTGO needs them to be 540 cards, so they just duplicate cards. Oh, I see. To get it up to that. Uh, I want, I will take duplicates of Chief of the Sky. Yeah, that's this also the second time we've seen Infest. Yes, it was in the same coalition, Please. even, like right Pre here. Presumably, mm -hmm. oh, right, they have a, they have a printer run, they have print runs uh -huh, uh -huh. in digital, because... This is an interesting card. Alright, um... That was a baffling card, is what that was. I don't want to think about murder and cast, cast out. out. Huh? Mm, which do we choose here? I think it's cast out because that's more. Like... There are occasions when you cycle it. 
It's like, ah, I just need to finish the game and find a creature. Let's Yeah, and like there are things we want exiled, like It's a lower uh lower color commitment. Yeah. Oh, nice. Too cheap for the scale. Oh boy, we're <laughs> Yes. Right, this can hit like can enchantments and artifacts it. too if something gets Yeah. Dumb. Yeah. Whereas like it's we sad have had to pass up murder, of course, but we're we're making a reasonable choice. Yep. Linvala the Preserver. Alright, so if I've had flying for six, if you're losing on life gain five, you have less creatures, get a three three flyer. Um so that are like scoured barons. Yeah, scoured barons <laughs> are like Oh, that's not the skull step steep. No, that's the other one. <laughs> The other one, or like steward of solidarity, which exerts to make a one-one warrior. It's a warrior that makes warriors. That's kind of nifty. Thought. Yeah. Well, I think we need a dragon. We don't have one. Yeah. Oh, rock the dragon. Gross. Why not bondkin? Huh. Anything that like any anything in limited that can give you multiple first striking creatures is really gross yeah it feels so nasty because it's like no one can attack you ever again it's yep. like, oh okay i guess you have like two white knights what am i gonna attack with like yeah other cards of note there's a raid card from uh our other sets mm -hmm. with raid grinning demon Ooh. <laughs> Hell yes. We passed on murder, how many, but... How many uh, delve cards do we have so far? Zero. The first one is a lot better than the second. <laughs> Indeed. So, yeah. Um, we're going to have a lot of removal. Yes. Oh, thank you. I did predict that he would come back. Not my uh, most masterful prediction ever, uh, of course. But. The one I'm happy about, because I love Mardu Skullhunter. This is uh, one of the warriors that seems to be kind of the bread and butter of the limited warrior deck. I think, I think seeing Wild Hunger in a pack of magic cards just took ten years off my life. <laughs> <laughs> what a card. There's Ruth. Ruth. No one wants a Dreadhorde Butcher, sadly. Which is weird. Oh, this card's, in, this card's incredible. That's that does not surprise me. This format has a whole lot of like reasonably Small. size and costed smaller creatures. And if Dreadhorde Butcher, if you're not like on the play and you know turn two attack with your Butcher, make him a two two, then nope. he he basically just sits behind and tries to trade off with a Grizzly Bear for the entirety of the game. All right. All right. a powered up environment. That's hey, Brendan. Uh, FF thirteen two is tomorrow. Today is magic. We could talk about <laughs> FF thirteen two if you want. I I saw the greatest implementation. Oh, you can pick whatever you want. By the way, I, I don't care about any. Cards. I, I don't care about these cards anymore. So I'm talking about you know whatever. Mm. Um, yeah, I was just talking about time and memory, but the best implementation of Final Fantasy thirteen two that I have seen. Actually, it's more of an implementation of Final Fantasy 13 is Final Fantasy 7, uh, the remake. Interesting. They did things with this game. I, I saw the demo. <clears throat> I did play the demo, I guess. And it's uh, it's sort of like all of the best parts of there's some kind of like arithmetic of Final Fantasies that you could do to make it like, you know, it's actually like eight and 13 and 15 but like minus something else the, and the combination yeah it's and it's like so what i expect from a re-release of a video game in in like this or any year is what i got with romancing saga 3 right it's just like okay they did their own translation they scaled up some of the graphics and kept absolutely everything intact and it's the exact same thing this is not the exact same thing. This is uh, like they just decided to make a good video game and have it be the plot and characters of Final Fantasy VII, sort of. 
<laughs> however much they needed from it. So it's it's way more a reimagining than a remake. It would be like if they somehow set out to make Final Fantasy VII this year, have it, having had it never exist, that kind of thing. Okay. So very impressed. And so they're taking everything that's, they've that's learned the from like all of the last Final Fantasy games. I think so. No, like as far as like learning from things, um, they're, they're like, that's that's actually only twenty three cards, right? Yeah, or twenty two. Yeah, because I'm looking at like. What more do I, you know, do I add in this package here? Probably. And then from here, is there anything else we want to um, add in? Like, you know, I don't have, you know, Chainer's Edict. Uh, Mardu Hateblade. I, a lot of my one-drops aren't <laughs> hanging out here, and some of them are pretty ah, strong. Poor Hateblade. I mean, how... I guess with Bloodsoak Champion, we might want to be lower to the ground like what if we what if we cut linvala and maybe some of the like clunkier fours and try to include more ones and be like low to the ground fast aggressive maybe 16 land even hmm. that doesn't square as well with like splash and craters clause which is the kind of thing that such an aggressive deck would want to have as reach so there is some tension to this decision yeah, and like looking at our our top end, like there's just like murderous cut isn't actually gonna get cut for being too expensive. It's 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 like two. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, like the thrashing brute, the thrasher brute, and high sentinels are like, it, like these are are. Mm -hmm kind of top end finishers this one just gives all of our warriors a, a drain life for one on come in which also works with our like being able to sack a warrior for a drain x and like we i feel like we can win a game with a lot of we have a lot of reach between this this and craters claws mm -hmm. so man now i'm kind of regretting not getting that that one exert creature to be able to like repeatedly make warriors yeah maybe that's just like never gonna happen. The ground gets gummed up too easily. I think. What do ice signals of Arashin actually do? <sighs> oh well, it's a better phantom monster, so I already like it. Yeah, and then um. Oh god. <laughs> what the hell is that? Okay. It's like the most yeah. auto first pick card you could ever see. <laughs> It's... Man, no, there was a there's like a creature in Dominaria who had a trick like this, right? The thing that could put um, plus one plus one counters on flying creatures. You yeah, and then that? and then it, it like... was like super powerful. <laughs> yes, and like way more expensive than that thing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. And this thing is like baseline. We're keeping that. Yeah, that's. <laughs> and, so I is... see a, I see a card with a long name. And I'm like, that can't possibly be good. Yeah. One of the, one of the things I, I think our deck works well with where it is. Um, oh, excuse me. Take your time, mate. I've been like coughing right into the microphone all night because I don't have a, uh, I don't have a cough button anymore. And whatever you did, I can't hear anymore if you're if you're still talking. All right, I am uncoughed. Okay, excellent. We're, we're, so our deck has a lot of mana outlets. Uh like just things to do with a lot of you know, excess mana in the sense of like Crater's Claws is a an endgame outlet. You know, the longer we go, Chainer's Edict is on. We have all these outlast creatures that are fine. And then you know, something like High Sentinels that's like, look, if you have infinite mana, go to town. Mm -hmm. uh, which which tells me like that we're probably okay with a 17 land deck. Especially because we even have like yeah. a discard outlet for it. But if we really wanted to keep Haunted Dead around. Um, or, if we wanted to even, or if we even wanted to add more uh, mana outlets. Yeah, this is just this is what we call mobilization. So. 
But you know what? When I say like a discard, I mean like Haunted Dead can be, you know, if we're just top decking land, late game, it is something to do with that land. I think right now it's the 23rd, 24th card. There is kind of a tension between that and playing out your land so you can like double activate high sentinels. Yeah. For instance. Or even just like make it to Linvala. (laughs) Kind of. I don't know. It. I, I don't think it's necessarily right or wrong to include it. We do have a lot of flexibility in how to make this deck. I, I think we're going to end up with a good one, yeah. basically, no matter what we do. I think I'm going to go with what we have here. Looking at and like, God, leaving cruel sadist on the side seems wrong because this is from here. What I really think the the correct air quotes, fire quotes, whatever you want. Mm-hmm. The the correct way to build this deck is down to how much we know about this cube and what kind of format it creates. <laughs> and I don't know anything about this. So. It makes a, it, 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 it takes, you know, we, we, right now we have a deck that does exist in cons, you know, warriors. Uh, it's just that our deck is a much more powerful expression of that game plan. You know, and I think most of our opponents are going to follow that, where it's going to be uh, the morph deck, but it's always a Sagu Mauler face down, so we probably should debilitate an injury and make sure the morphs don't flip. Um, or, also, we have a lot of answers to Sagu Mauler. Edict here, Edict here. Crackling Doom on the sideboard is the ultimate edict. <laughs> the ultimate answer to the Sagu Mauler. All right, um, and then I'm... Uh, including... does, does, this, does this cube follow the the morph rule? It, it does not. Uh, basically because uh-huh. the moment you include morphs from literally any other set that is yeah, not... Yeah, you, you could curate it, I think, in such a way but... that that wasn't true. But yes, Exalted Angel exists. Okay, that's, yeah. that's the morph rule shot all to hell right there. <laughs> Yeah, Exalted Angel exists. All the, like, red ones that make you question everything. The 3-1 First Striker. Uh, the the Goblin Commando that if it gets through, it deals two. Um, there's... Of the Living. Oh. Yeah, so the Morph Rule does not hold. It, it's... it's okay. I mean, I think... That's fine. That's fine. I just I just wanted to know. I don't... Yep, it, 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 that's information. I'm going to uh, include... Contemplating the possibilities of what morphs our opponents actually have is kind of giving me a headache. All right, I'm going to include Hero Mountain. Um, yeah. Which is, what, two red sources for our one splash card? Yep. And okay. Seeing as our splash card is, like, the card we want to cast yeah, as he's... the final... Right, right. We've been, we've been losing the game for, like, eight straight turns, drawing nothing but lands. Our opponent is at seven, just... <laughs> and deleted... Yeah. So, so yeah, Hero Mountain, and let's just jump yeah, on in. If we if we had somehow gotten a, a fetch land along the way, I would be a whole lot happier with Hero Mountain. Yeah, there was a an arid mesa again. I think the first couple packs we ended up not picking up too much fixing. I think after the point where we decided, you know, black white was our our. <laughs> Seeing like six cards that we would want to six non-land cards in our sideboard there that we theoretically picked highly maybe that means we didn't pick (laughs) fixing highly enough but i don't know i think we made reasonable choices it's hard to know so this looks pretty sweet i want to introduce flexibility to the notion of of pick orders and card evaluations and so on Oh boy. Green ether. Oh, ew. Ew. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no, I get you. I I understand. And here comes a morph for two. Two cost morph. A double strike. <laughs> My answer. Like, hey. 
Yeah, somebody mentioned at the beginning, like, do you think they'll ever print the morph as a t as bear instead? That's right. That's it. That's, that's right there. If you ever want it. Okay, I want to draw that fourth land pretty bad here. Another morph. Perfect. Um. So I'm going to attack first, leaving cast out up. Okay. If they go for the double block, we take our two for one. Pretty sweet. I feel like this is too obvious, so they're just going to, you know, take it. Yep. Even without it being, like, obvious necessarily, it's still sort of, you know, trading four damage for four damage. Mm -hmm. So... It's not like they're losing a whole lot for, for not blocking either. In theory, yeah, again, we played our guy post combat, but. Yeah. Well, but we leave the choice open and, like, now next turn. Well, also, this can hand off double strike to our four power thing next turn. Which means <laughs> 12. And then, you know. Okay, Flame Slash, sure. It's, it's fine. It's fair. It's a good card. I think we're in a very. The third morph, okay. So much mana fixing for colorless spells. Kind of blown away. Okay, I feel like that's, that's probably a real line. He, brought, he blocks morphs, mm -hmm. I like that. Hero Mountain would have been pretty welcome, I think. Yeah. Sad we lost our Thrasher Brute when we're about to make two uh, bodies, but you know. We are unlikely to double spell anytime soon. It's a bit of an uncomfortable spot, but. Yeah. Hmm. Attacking morphs in a bunch of open mana, huh? Yeah, you can have that. I'll take I'll take it. <laughs> I like that a lot. That gives me like blood chin plus activation if I needed it. I think here we attack with Anaf the the Arishin plus Mardu Horde Chef. I like it. And then Yeah. No one blocks. Why would you block? I feel like they're going to flip up. <laughs> One thing they could do is flip up Pine Walker. Mm. Uh, but I have the perfect response to a flip up Pine Walker. <laughs> oh, I even have a perfect response to that. So. Peter. No. No god or very tall, fast <laughs> man will stand before me. Holy shit. It went to four? No, it went to four rather than blocked. All right. We don't know what those morphs are. Are they going to make more morphs? Oh, my god. god. How do you do that? How do you get that many morphs? I guess when you like early pick the obscuring ether, then you're just like, oh, any morph is good for me. Uh, Crater's Claws would be a uh, good way to win the game if we could cast it, yes. Yes. Currently have a, around a 1 in 14 to be able to do that. Gasp. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's just deal two to any target when it flips up. So there goes our double strike. It's reasonable. No double spell here today. Hmm. hmm. Uh. 
I'm thinking just playing the Bloodshin Fanatic and passing. Yeah, Bloodshin cannot eat itself. Another warrior. Yeah. Sounds good to me. They... <laughs> Trying to put them on secret plans. <laughs> okay, bunch of gray ogres. Actually, like a bunch of grizzly bears. Come to think, and, yeah. Uh, two in hand. Prim evil bounty. Didn't even see that. Uh, this is a soldier. Yeah, quite sad for that. Yeah, sadly I can't just eat Horde Chief and then move on with life. Um, what is this flipping up? Uh... Ugh. Oh, no. Well, that's gruesome, um, considering we know that they have a... Like, one of their guys flips up to be a shock. Yeah. Somehow our opponent has, like, an EDH deck. Okay. <laughs> Oh, they're, they're labeled. That's nice. I feel like we should know which one is the Skirk Marauder. It is this one here. Fourth okay. face down. They're labeled first, second, third, fourth. Oh. Even still, yeah, like it, we saw it get turned face down. I think it should have the same label that we put on like ours. Right. Okay. Yeah. I actually want to remove some of these bodies from the table. Makes so. sense. He's raided. He's done his job. Oh god, our opponent's this deep, huh? Ew. Ew. <laughs> Target creature with a morph ability. All right, I'm going to Falconer Edict them. We will take away their worst 2-2, two -two, shrinking Exodron to a 3-3 three -three if we do so. Yeah, and that seems safe because, like, this that's, also yeah, will... that's, that's not bad. And Exodron can also, like, secretly die thanks to how it gets pumped. Yes. You know, like if you combat with a bunch of things and like multiple morphs die, then it can like die to two damage. Uh, yep. That kind of thing. Yep. Okay. Venom Sprout Brachus. What in the world? You ever like fake cards, Kaz? Uh, card, I, cards I hope just, I like fake cards. Cards that's just don't exist, exist in the game of. Uh... <laughs> You're just. I feel like it, when you get to the, the level of Venom Sprout Brachus, you're just saying sound chunks. Seventh yeah, creature. Can... All right. Dang. Their deck probably looks substantially worse without that obscuring ether. Yes. Remember, we at any point have the Hero Mountain to... Uh... To end I'm this. I'm really surprised they haven't turned it face down. Like, that just, that's secretly like extra power, right? It's like an onboard trick. We, we are deluged in mysteries. So, yeah, for instance, here, a double block Bloodshin Fanatic warrior would not actually result in this thing dying because they have the onboard trick of flipping their thing, right? Yeah, they can flip their thing, but that would actually bring it down to a 2-2. Two -two. I think it'd be okay with that. Okay. Also, if they don't see it. I feel like if you draft this deck... You have you to know that, it. right? Come on, Prim Evil they Bounty. Okay, they see it. Okay. I guess there was that way out of it. To, wait. Well, that kept Ixadron alive, but that's that was the worst way. To, that was the worst onboard trick, I want to say. <laughs> mm. 
Now we're in Danger Town. Yeah, could could we still draw our angel? Yes, and that would be... I feel like that would... We wouldn't would gain life off it yet. Not now. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Right now. Woo! Off the top rope. Okay. So if our opponent is fearless, they will transform their obscurity through an attack allowed. Yeah. That play would win them the game, I'm pretty sure. You ever feel like a, uh, you saw a bunch of infests and you didn't take them? I sometimes feel that way. Okay, well... The fear! The fear! Okay! Hell yeah. <laughs> Alright, that gives us a turn. Also, yeah, go to three. Four life makes you afraid. Three. Yeah, is less than four, so we could possibly gain a bunch of life if we... And, and, gr are. and greater than two, so we can pay for a blood crypt. So I don't get to lose on a blood crypt. Come on. Make them have made the wrong decision. Right now. <sighs> Dang it. Well... All right. way out of this now. We can't like suddenly put a, a plus one plus one counter on our thing. What do we got? Patron of the Wild. Oh. Ugh. Yeah, that was dead to the stamp Snowhorn Rider. Okay. Dead a million ways. Okay. Got it. That would not have helped. All right. Well now. Um... Do we have anything that's actively bad against a, a horde of secret creatures? I think that's the more important question to ask because yeah. their their plan is very straightforward, right? Like, like you know, we picked debilitating injury for a reason. Um, like, no, because like Chief of the Scale fights them so nicely. It's already quite good. Um, like we were we were pretty close to closing that game actually it just we we bricked off a whole lot and they did sure freebooter if their deck actually is just all creatures that's true that's true um you know what, on that <laughs> we could fight we could fight the face down creatures with face down creatures with mastery of the, of the unseen which would make their ixadron even better <laughs> 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 <coughs> I still think that might Sorry. be funny enough to to work. <laughs> still might be the thing to do. I'll show you bricking off. <laughs> Crunch. Put all my lands on the battlefield. All right, I would like to play first. Yes. Ugh. Planes, planes, planes. Mastery. Well, it's a play on two and in. Wait, how much is Mastery of the Unseen cost? Four. Okay, well, a play on two, and theoretically a play on four. That's not the worst. Kratos Claws is a bit of a grumpus. This is already kind of a mold of six. So, look at this hand with, with Kratos Claws removed. Would you keep that six? I wouldn't keep this. Yeah, I would not keep this. Okay, and, then Mulligan. I, I think yeah. that's, that's pretty straightforward. Ah, uh, this. This is so much better. Uh, keep that, and we, I guess we throw one of our removal spells down. Right? They're all pretty interchangeable because all of their creatures are... I think Murder's Cut is actively the worst. Yeah, because I don't want to remove because... Edict and this doesn't go to the art. Yeah. For those reasons. Also, talk. Uh, sweet creature. <laughs> Got our 2-3. What are, what are you going to do about a 2-3? They're going to play 2 they're gonna No, they're going to play their Obscuring Edict. They don't have an Obscuring Edict. Oh, ah, all right. Feeling good about that. Okay, whatever. We have a removal really for that. Like... When my opponent's deck so relies on a card, and they just so always have it in their opener. And mm. Like I have, I have played so many games of limited that are like this. Hey, what is it? It's a. Uh... What the hell that thing is? Dang. 
Yeah, that's pretty good. Discard then draw? Yo! Yeah, it's discard then draw, so if you're empty handed. God damn! Not that! Although I think it is like a bit of poetic justice that our opponent beats us to death with this card, considering you beat me to death with it. It's true, but we're gonna play High <laughs> Sentinels of Arash in here, and then. Okay. Maybe we're gonna punch their face in before their enchantments do anything. That would yep. be nice. What if you just play two twos and I don't care because like my board is like five power flyers? Okay, hopefully they don't have flame slash. <laughs> okay, I understand my opponent's choice is a little better now. Hey, want to take a safe block? Air quotes. Okay, good. Our opponent has been... A apart from, like, a little bit of cowardice, which, considering, like, their unknown information, I can kind of accept, considering the, the commanding position they were in, it's, it, like, a little bit of cowardice is acceptable. Mm -hmm. But... Other than that, they've been making good decisions. Oh, well, our morph is bigger than your morphs because we got a plus one, plus one counter. Hey, you like me now? It's a really strong Wrath of God there. Um... I think I'll attack with a 3-3, three, three, see what they do, yeah. and then, like... Yeah, we could, like, flash out, flash cast out on the Fetto, mm -hmm. and then... You know, if they if they block with it, why why would they even take a Actually, trade with Exodron? There's... I guess the two two can attack as well. Sweet, yeah, that's a that's a more reasonable block on Exodron. I don't think they'll buy it, but I don't care. These are both these are both safe. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Let's put them to four. Well, this is not no. This is not uh. These are not manifested cards. These are just face down creatures with no text. Yeah, Exodron gets to. There, so, as far as the whole, like, making all the cards in the cube work together thing, they, you know, they did, they mostly got there. They didn't have the technology of Manifest back in the Ixodron days, which is probably a reason to not print Ixodron. But, mm. you know, Time Spiral was a hell of a drug. Well, this is, this is perfect. We ruin your day. We, we drink your milkshake. Okay. Heal you any damage, but you all lose other things. And we had to do that there so that they couldn't, like, you know, flip down, obscuring ether yeah. or like some other trick. Sure, land out of them is pretty nice to see because it's. <laughs> Did it gain the life? Baby. Want to turn a guy face? You want to turn an enchantment into a creature to spare yourself? Oh no! Flashing in oh, Yeah, that's an actively good card. Yeah, but uh, I've got bad news for the actively good card. <laughs> ah. So every morph they draw is going to be hugely powerful. Because of Trail of Mystery. Which is most of the competition, composition, composition of, of their deck. Because yeah. sure. they're gonna it's gonna filter lands out of their deck, and it's going to like when they flip up, they're going to win the combat. So The Nux. Okay. Oh, bold. Are you going to give it haste? No. Okay. Oh, shit. So the, the model here is you attack with Blood Soak Champion. They block it or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, you sacrifice it to Blood Shin Fanatic. Mm -hmm. And then because you attacked, Blood Soak Champion is then able to uh, pick itself back up out of the yard with raid. Mm -hmm. So that's a good combo. Hey, cool. Check out this. We only need four activations of that to, to win, so... 
So the knuckle blade can haste. Uh, weird. Um, haste pump and jump. He's a pretty powerful card. Oh. Oh boy. Oh my god. All right. We we get to tell them what the splash is for. Feel like doing that multiple times in a turn when we can't guarantee the next raid is a little greedy of you, but I appreciate the bloodthirst. I figure the 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 reason I'm doing it that way is that we can we still have like high sentinels the face down that can attack and go along with that. The main reason I'm doing that is a top deck to land means that that interaction is lethal rather than having to cast Crater's Claws. All right, getting rowdy. Yeah, it's that's fu That's fine, we're fine. 24. We just gained life. <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> the other worry is that our opponent's so deep on morphs that morph could just be like counterspell the morph, you know? Right. There's by, there's by no means a guarantee that Crater's Claws resolves when we cast it. Mm hmm There's Karu's Spell Snatcher, there's Counterspell Morph, there's Will Bender, there's... Yeah. They don't have cards in hand. So basically what I want to do is I want to attack with High Sentinels of Arashin and maybe even Bloodshin Fanatic to get them to use those morphs. That's sweet as well. Because this is pick up at instant speed, and this is sack at instant speed. Yes, it's, it's gross. They don't print them like that anymore, because of things like this. Yeah. So I'm gonna see what blocks look like. And I don't need to resolve anything here. This is going to be a full right? trade. This is so... kind of fine. It's up to them to take some sort of action. You can't resolve to the morph action, but you can resolve to triggers that that morph causes. Holy shit. So they're going to get... This gets plus two, plus two, and this will give plus three, plus three to that. However... Of, they're tapped out, right? They're, they're just dead to the Crater's Claws. Yeah, I'm not even going to take any more action. Okay. Okay, hey, this is what the Red Splash is for. Okay, no. <laughs> <laughs> right, this is the spider haver. <sighs> Okay, can we have a game against this opponent where they don't have, um, turn one, the card that makes their deck, like... We can do that, but you have to say the name of that card. If you can't think of its name, they're gonna have it. Shit, uh, nobody say it in the chat or else... I'm not gonna do anything to you, but I'll be sad that you said it. <laughs> We've seen it twice. No. Because Trail of Mystery is what I keep thinking <laughs> in my head, because it's not Trail not of Mystery. Trail. They did have Trail of Mystery in the second game, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's the, the, the mists. The misty. It's the, the innervating 
10 seconds. I'm not letting you do this forever. <laughs> yeah, I got, I, I'm, I'm, it's not there. Okay, they're going to have it. You'll see yeah, it soon enough. I know, we'll, we'll see it when we see it. Um, do you want to know what it's called? We'll see it on turn one, don't worry okay. about it. Okay, that's fine. Um, you do. <laughs> it's funny, but let's 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 roll. Okay. Uh, all right, so they will be on the play, which is a big boon for their deck. So they're gonna go forest. Oh my and god! The card, <laughs> the chief. Keep. Can show them what a fraud we are. Not happening. Hey, they didn't have a turn one. Amazing. What was their scry? Not that this is actually like relevant information ever, but scry top. They like what they saw. Okay. Oh my god! Stomping ground tapped. Kill the chief. And here comes their morphs. Full cost morph. Sure. Oh, no, they're fine. Got bad news for you if you're afraid of a 2-3. Oh, sweet. Yeah, we get to, like... Yeah, let me, let me get to gain perfect info. Like, remove all doubt, right? Stubs? Wow. Stop! Also, oh, right, they're off blue. They didn't play blue there for some reason. Um, okay, so this exiles, right? Yeah. Hmm. Chrome Shell Crab is the swap. Ashcloud Phoenix is the. I, honestly, I think this is the one I'm more worried about. This is so expensive to flip. We can probably just murder his cut in response. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think exiling Ashcloud Phoenix is great. Yeah. That's what we want to do. All right. And now we just want to draw land off the top. Oh god. Not courtyard. It's fine. Uh remind me, does Stubborn Dial counter like any spell or non creature and it's a four spike. Okay. That's what I thought. Okay. So here's the courtyard. Oh nope. Sweet. Do you want to thrash? <laughs> it could be the crab. <laughs> and also just edict them and play this chief. That's fine. Uses all our mana. We get to double spell. We get to see the crab. It was the crab. Yep. So we can remove that from our known information in both places. Both places sure, yeah. Because I doubt they have any crab. <laughs> and if they do, that's not information that we actually have, so. Okay. Three cards, one's a stubs. Something to keep in mind for the Crater's Claws. Yep. All right, just draw Serac. <laughs> oh man, now they could have Serac plus Stubbs. Mm -hmm. Okay, well they don't, so. Ixidor! Oh my god! I can't Our, believe they went so heavy into this plan. Our opponent is this hard on, on, onto the plan. I'm gonna play cast out here. Okay. Yeah, they had to tap both their blue for that. Mm hmm. So, in case you're joining us just now, oh my God. Uh, our opponent's deck is basically all morphs. Like, 100% morphs and morph carers. Reality has exiled me. I am no longer bound by its laws. Mm -hmm. All right, so X-Death. I will create a angel girlfriend. To... Yeah, uh, yeah, like, our opponent is, like, <laughs> like something like 18 morph creatures. Ixidor, Ixidron, mm -hmm. uh... Every, like, morph liker, like, it's incredible. 
They even have obscuring ether. Oh my god, that's a card. Obscuring. Okay. <laughs> they are putting they just... somehow didn't have it. The curse is not real. Thank God. Yeah, the both game one and two they played obscuring ether on one, which is one green, your morphs cost two and or minus one, and it can flip down. But basically what they did in games one and two is they went obscuring ether, morph, 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 Ixodron, morph, morph. Like <laughs> I believe this is our opponent of uh, leaving and not so many words. I mean, if they're going to give me a break, I'm going to take it. Yeah. I'll be back in a minute. Sounds good. So, yeah. Wait, I don't know if that muted me. Did that mute me? You are not muted. Okay, I'm going to have to work harder to mute myself. <laughs> You'll find a way. That's fine. We have, we have time here. We got Thrasher Brutes. So yeah, we are Warriors splashing for Volcano Blowout. That's our deck. We also have Removal, 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 Removal. Because we're Black-White main. Like, our deck is pretty heavy on this strong Removal. Um, we also are cheating. Welcome to the cube, everybody. A quick, yeah, they made the, the the cube has a collation issue. I think it's a uh, it's either a four fifty or a, a, a three sixty. It's not a, so basically the way cubes work on Magic Online is that they have to be five hundred forty cards, which is an eight, which is not an eight player cube. That's a um, twelve player cube or a twelve players worth of cards cube. Um, so if it doesn't have 540 cards, it will add duplicates. I was going to say 25. Okay, yeah, that's, that's fewer than I thought. I, I did not win on that. But yeah, anyway, the cube has this issue. We saw double infest, which I guess they know infest is real and are playing Ixor. Oh my god. So, time to talk about Final Fantasy 13 and 13 2. Uh, I'm not going to tell you any facts that you don't know. Cool. Because I think everything that I'm going to talk about is stuff that you've seen already. Mm -hmm. um, 13 2, as far as I can read it, is a um, what we call the silver rule of playtesting. Okay? All right. Now, well, tell me about the silver rule. The, the golden rule of playtesting. The golden rule of playtesting is that the player is not wrong. Okay? If you're getting feedback from your players that's like, hey, this sucks, I don't like this, you know, this isn't working for me, you got to listen to it. Mm -hmm. Okay? So that's the golden rule of playtesting. The player is not wrong. The silver rule of playtesting is the player is not necessarily right. <laughs> <laughs> and so in Final Fantasy... Th oh, it finally happened. Never mind, we can... <laughs> We can resolve cast out. Resolving cast out. Pizza here. They cast me out of the stream so that I could go get a beer. They, 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 they have, they have, the, the pizza has arrived. All right, sweet. I'd say they're not, like, out of this game, but they kind of are. Like, I don't... They're at 17 life. They're not out of this game yet. <sighs> the thing is, like... The next draw they're going to have is going to be a face down creature. They play, if they draw yeah, Sagu Mauler, that would I'm, suck. I'm not, I'm not so overwhelmingly confident in our position, given like the resources involved mm -hmm. and what we've seen in the poll. That I, I just. Oh, no, anyway, uh, I guess you got a couple we'll minutes here on the cast out. Oh, okay, more, more minutes. Oh, right, we had to target. From the yeah. enemies of the battlefield, uh, triggered ability of cast out. Okay, silver rule of playtesting. The player is not necessarily right. So please, please, please leave it to the designers that you have to address the, the grievances that you get from playtesting. Don't just let your players tell you what to do. They shouldn't tell you what to do. They should tell you what they like and don't like, and then use the designer to respond to that and figure it out okay, well, how can I make that better? 
uh-huh. uh, because they're they're not game de- designers; they're players by and large. Um, so they don't have the the experience and training and so on that comes with that discipline. Uh-huh. Um, and Final Fantasy thirteen and thirteen two are a uh, what do you call it? Not an operant, a um, case study in <laughs> exactly this thing happening. Players complained that Final Fantasy XIII was a bunch of linear hallways leading one to the next. Well, fine. We'll give you a huge non-linear sprawling open thing where you can go anywhere, asterisk, and uh, give you no direction. Here, go play. <laughs> go so, into the time zone. Here you go. There are so many, there are so many micro decisions of the design of, of the two games that read the same way and um it's almost fun to just sort of like see what you can while it goes it's like oh well you know final fantasy 13 was too serious it didn't have enough comic relief well here's a mascot moogle creature that is gonna bounce around and say silly things and you get to toss it like a football (laughs) enjoy that yeah, like uh, just from from play experience, I remember one of the bigger like complaints was like, you know, this game takes twenty five hours to get out of your tutorial, and Final Fantasy Thirteen Two doesn't really have a tutorial. Mm. It just gives you it gives you your full party at two hours, and it just says roll with it. Hope you know what you're doing. Um, it it makes. The assumption you have played Final Fantasy 13 and just says, well, okay, fine, no tutorial though. <laughs> what if we did all of that but the opposite? Yeah, same thing with the, the dialogue options. Even though they have no real effect on the storyline, they always present you the dia- dialogue options because it's like, oh, well, I always wanted to like choose my path. It's all about choice. Where like nothing in Final Fantasy 13 is about choice. Everything in Final Fantasy 13 2 is about choice, except yeah, secretly. It isn't all that much, but <laughs> you can choose to go fight the tomato, and you can choose to have the tomato destroy you. I do love the the tomato part. the 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 whole tomato part gave me one of my maybe my best post ever <laughs> on the something awful <laughs> forums, where I was able to demolish someone who complained. They complained at us that we because we did like. We did a Let's Play of Final Fantasy XIII Mm 2. And they complained at us that, you know, we were making fun of this game because we just didn't know the real reasons for everything, right? We weren't paying attention to the story, and we hadn't read the data log. Well, one, (laughs) this prompted me to read through both data logs of, or all data logs of both games, so they could know that I read it. And two... (laughs) <laughs> and two, I created a, a post in that thread where they were like, hmm, what? <laughs> you I guys assume. just don't know the plot. And so I recited the entire plot, including the part where Snow extremely gradually eats a tomato. <laughs> For <sighs> 300 years, what? I have been mastering my tomato. I want to say that uh, horse ebooks was uh, current. Even in that day, yeah. Oh, do you need archive? Do you need archives to be able to, to see that? I haven't logged into the forums in like. You might. I, I have. I have no idea. Well, it's worth paying ten dollars to read that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no need for archives. You don't even need to pay, but it's worth that. The uh, the, yeah. Actually, if you like what I've written there, you should pay me ten dollars. How about that? <laughs> Instead of low tax. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've I've been like the the reputation the game has, like, doesn't fully match how the game has been playing so far. Like, it, it's been a lot more enjoyable than I expected. For one. You know, the, kind of this this game was built up as sort of a, mm-hmm. a a mess of mechanics and like 
Yeah. You know, I, I think that what, what you're getting is a lot of, like full game lengthy considered opinions condensed into a like a nugget that's fair that was so i mean one of the reasons and honest to god like what like the only reason that i didn't fully enjoy myself while we were doing the lp is because for some reason the rest of the posse insisted on doing the most bestest thing most optimal thing to create the perfect murder monster and it took forever and I hated every second of it. And I'm like, why are we grinding for this? We could just take what we have and finish this sucker off. Why are mm. you making this bad? So you can make the game as miserable as you want. That's possible <laughs> in Final Fantasy 13 too. Yeah, I'm a... Uh, because I remember one of the... I had, a, I had a couple reasons I played Final Fantasy 13 when I streamed it a couple years back. Uh, one of them was I had talked to Luke and, you know, kind of in urging me to play it for a, for like half a decade at that point. But another point and part of it was that, you know, Final Fantasy 13 is another game that has a lot of, a lot of player people have a lot of opinions about the game. As we said, you know, it's too linear. It's uh, uh, tutorials are too long. It's plot makes no sense. Uh, as you, as the, the four, you had said and the forum members were like, no, no. Um, but, <laughs> Oh, hey, we're hey! The match. we win. I am I'm a little upset at our opponent for choosing to concede in that manner. I I, I like uh, as Shabadoo says, it's been a long time since we've had the like waiting for round two, <laughs> where we just have to. <laughs> that sit was and that talk. was the waiting for round two. So it, since we since changing over to leagues, they eliminated right. that. Remember where we'd have to fill like thirty minutes? Like I do. And, oh my god. I mean, we ended up getting we a did. lot of good conversations. Yeah, that, that was. It. But I do understand why they would not want that to be the model for their right. ancient software that they should, you know, start <laughs> working on actively sunsetting rather than just sort of letting it wither on its own. But I that's, would, I would, that's a lot of. Yeah, I would, I would, I would much simple. rather them like just kind of know that this is like the cube plus like pioneer and backwards formats machine and if there was play. some kind of like clear distinction between the the two like yeah. digital things that we have that would be nice but oh boy wombat four five six seven eight born in the year one million nine hundred and forty five thousand six hundred and seventy eight we have an ancient wombat here or maybe a future one. Ah. Ancient future one. Uh, all right. This is one of those tough. Okay. Uh, can, uh, can I show you a fake card while we're waiting? Oh, yeah. Parting thoughts. That skeleton loves what he's seeing. What is happening? What? Wait, what is that logo? Why does Leshrat get. What? <laughs> what it's a treasure chest. Did they just like take anyone's card that they that they made themselves, and they're like, "Here's my custom card." <laughs> All right, this is keepable for certain. We have a one and a two, and some high payoffs. Fanatic Town. Not not feeling the chin music. Well, I'm feeling like because I'm fearing Harold. I'm feeling del del de de debilitating injury. Feeling okay. our two lands, I feel like these are going to be like okay. the plays we went off of. Sure. So, thank you, London Mulligan. Yeah, if things go like very bad, we can cycle cast out. Um... I am kind of baffled by cards I have never seen and never heard came out and. Have no fanfare, presumably. I don't know. Right. Those are cards from like a commander set from three years ago that, you know, commander decks didn't get releases on Magic Online, so. Carsey Deceiver. 
Oh. Get out. <laughs> Not another one of you. Oh, uh, God. Uh, <laughs> do you know a morph is a megamorph cost? Or a megamorph is a morph cost? Yeah. Oh, whatever. Yeah. It's fine. Play their O4 that can attack. Yep. Whatever. I'm just going to play Blood Crypt Tapped. And that's that's it. Do you think the last opponent had that card? I think they would have picked it highly, given what yeah, the oh my, plan was. My god, because this sort of makes up for not having uh, your that one drop. I think they're playing it as an 0-4. So I do think I want to take the shots I have on these morphs. That's the entire point of debilitating right, injury. Right, right. I mean, debilitating injury has one job, and we are getting its value out of it by doing this. Uh, could we tap that? Thank you. Yes. Okay. Yes, we can. <clears throat> I thought about I thought about leaving this open because it leaves up more of a... Ah, they also have the Riptide Survivor. Well, rip him. Yeah, I was thinking of leaving up cycling because if our opponent is a deck full of gray ogres, then maybe that's maybe removal isn't actually good. I'm gonna hold it here because they didn't play a morph. It tells me that this actually has more value than we like. I think they're playing it as an O four. I mean, we've already seen one morph, so in theory, it can tap for that. We will outlast you. One of the reasons I want to activate this is because getting a plus one, plus one counter on this. So the cool thing is that, for one, it doesn't trigger on a one, one counter. So if they go for a removal spell, it won't stop. Yeah. Because it triggers on the, the activation, not on the... Um, one one counter. Wow! So we just cut on our squire. Yeah. I mean, I guess they they spent more mana on that than we did. I'm fine with that exchange. And yeah, we didn't come out empty. Okay. Uh, what if he is a one two? At this point, I actually want to hold on to high sentinels for a little while. Worried they might get countered or killed. I, this seems like an opponent who is playing blue-black control. And, like, I want to, to, you know, give a little bit of respect to the fact that they might be just holding up another kill spell. Oh, okay, they are hyper-draw here. That's good. Mm -hmm. This card is incredibly strong. Jumpstart is discard a land to flash it back. Chemistry's Insight is uniquely powerful in a limited mm -hmm. format. Which is to say, any given limited format. Ooh. Morph and turn face up. <laughs> Morph and turn face up. I love that little bit of text. Yep. I cannot get enough of it. So we have the Morph down. Okay. They wanted to leave up Blue Blue 1. That's what that tells me. So they have a cancel. <coughs> Alright, well, let's attack first. Sounds good to me. Turn on our raid. Yep, that's likely, I think, our play here. Skull Hunter is an embarrassing thing to try and cancel. And if they do, Murderous Cut is on if I want to take that. We're looking for your skull. Mm hmm Got any skulls? Okay, and we're going to get a card out of them. Sweet. Riddle form. Again, they specifically held up that mom. Mm. And step morph. Nope. Hmm. So they're going to have Cancel up for the rest of the game, is what I'm hearing. Yeah, we're going to need to just kind of play into... Oh. Oh, hey. <laughs> well, then. <laughs> that can shortcut matters. Give me that. Okay. 
Letting it resolve. Well, what were you holding up? They were holding up Cancel. Cancel, a Fetto Exterminator, and Ixadron again. Stupid Ixadron. Right. Wait, what happens to face down tokens? Uh, they don't flip face down. All right, so we're taking your sinister sabotage. Uh, this is flipping face up. What is it? I want to know. This is sacrificing one of our creatures. More of turn face. This before blocks. That's kind of weird. Bane for three? Don't be Bane of the living. Damn it! <laughs> yeah, I've played Magic once or twice. <laughs> <sighs> Sigh. Yep. Well. Yeah, so Bane for three. That gets rid of everything. They have their cancel back. Uh, their revealed hand is this stuff here. Uh... I want to say it's the Sinister nope. Sabotage. Not yeah. Replaced, but that's okay. okay. There is there is a counter spell in there, Sinister Sabotage. Yep. Anyway. Pass it back. They need to play something to make f some sort of forward progress. A land. I mean, it's not like they're under pressure from us right now. Yeah. The morph. So that's a Fedo Exterminator? Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and kill it. <clears throat> um... Want to counter that? That's what I'm asking. <laughs> oh, they do. Weird. That's sweet because our play, a photo exterminator, is a minus three, minus three on flip up. It's got four okay. toughness. Uh, they kept that on top. Okay. Oh, wow, an outlast creature. Hee <laughs> hee. Okay, this might get the Ixtron. Oh, how much is uh, Exterminator to turn face up, actually? Four. It's Four. a three one. So they would have to have nine to do the, like, face him up and then X. Okay, they just okay. had a kill. Sure. They just had a kill spell. Okay. They spent more mana on that than we spent on our guy. Yeah. It's not that bad in the abstract. Not the beats. I'm actually happy with the beats because the more beats we take, <laughs> if we can go down to 16. I mean, you could play Disowned Ancestor and then not block their body check. Yeah. That's kind of free, too, because they could attack and then be like, oh, I'll turn face up and then minus three. Ha! On your 0-4. So it doesn't even, like, look weird that we don't want to block. Yeah. Now, I do want the, they, I do want them to have more creatures than us on the Linvala. And hopefully they just play a creature here, you know? This is just their... Play the Ix. Play oh. the, it, oh, well. They top deck the lance and they're going to draw two. Fabled Passage? What is that doing here? Fixing. Gross. What annoys me about Fabled Passage is that it has the gold border and pin lines. Wait, that costs four to flip up. What are you playing at now? Oh, they have the... No, 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 no. They, they have, have the, the, uh, the car seat to see right? Sorry. Yeah. I have been deceived. I was almost deceived. I'm very sorry. Well, we don't get to play our angel anyway, so how about that? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I don't want to just give them a, you know, reason. Okay. Oh. Ugh. Want that land real, real now. Do I want enough to cycle cast out? Okay, so the model being that we get the land, we play Linvala, we get the life and the creature, and mm -hmm. then they untap with their board? Basically. And then they have Exodron to flip it down, but... Hmm. Doesn't flip down the tokens. This is still a 1 1 counter. Yes, this will be able to flip up for minus 3 minus 3. Ugh. Extron's a real pain to fight against. Yeah. Maybe that would be a reason to keep the cast out, considering we know they haven't. And I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of Talrand, actually. Okay. That card's pretty scary in anything that resembles a game going longer. And they have a lot of these control elements that make it powerful. All right. Good for us that they didn't get that before they cast Chemistry in right. Insight twice. Okay. Again, three unknowns in their hand now. They've again the chemistry's insight has built up a lot that we just don't know anymore. Shit. Yep, it's a cool angel dragon. Yep, the immediate yep. exile on that. Correct choice. Not really close. Are you gonna ship? No. They don't want they don't want us to block with blood soak champion. <laughs> hey, tap six land. All right, I. Now that we don't have our, you know, angel, I'm just gonna go ahead and put whatever we've got on the board. Feed the chief to their flip up. That's fine. Basically. I'm also happy getting counters on this. This will be pretty strong to keep continuing to have counters on for, again, the Ixodron. Having a creature that outclasses everything else will be nice. Yes, Fedo Exterminator. Oh no, it was a Fedo Exterminator! <laughs> <laughs> what were the odds? If that had been some like different creature that also oh ruined our day, I would have been very impressed. Oh, you got to fight a bane of the living. That's... They've gotten uh, quite a lot of advantage on us between bane of the Oh, oh no! no! <laughs> oh, obliterated! <laughs> yeah, I just murder draw two. That's easy. Hmm. Yeah, okay. I think at this point we're playing to learn what cards yeah. are in our opponent's deck. This game's over. Do you want to block that guy? Can't. I do, but I, we can't. Oh, they figured it out. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, signed murder in blood. Probably play another morph here. Draw a course for draw two. <laughs> Damn. And the morph. Yeah, okay. That's fine. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> All right, give as good as you get, huh? They don't have anything with counters, so this is just murder. Ours is nowhere near as good as theirs.
Yeah, it's not power. It's literally counters. That's the reason it drew two. So they go like land, float mana from their um, from their boyo there, Ix. And then flip up to kill. Flip up, murder, like... They could frankly do anything at this point. They have a whole bunch of cards. Here it comes. Are they actually doing the line that I said? Uh-huh. Okay. It seems like a bit much, but... I accept. <laughs> Makes sense to me because it's cards we already know. That's true. You know, why show us anything new in order to bring the beats? And it does get them one extra damage. And on the next turn, a lot more extra damage because their 04 became a 2 2. That kind of thing. Yep. Okay. Time to pack it in. So. <laughs> God, not you. Everybody loves. Everybody wants to be a master of the veil. Yeah. All right. Um. Okay. So. I think mastery of the unseen is quite good against them because it's like a thing they can not remove and it's yeah. a whole bunch of creatures now our freebooter is a lot better against an opponent of this type i think so yeah um can we can we make a case for raider's wake rather than one of our bigger clunkier creatures so we just like get all the cards out of their hand and they they're like they're crippled at that point it's not a, like a super solid case because they're going to have their morphs. Yeah. So they do have like some stuff on the ground. I do think that Mastery of the Unseen is a, a better card against their deck than like something that we have, surely. Yeah. I think, um, maybe just the Horde Chief. Like everything else is either going to be a big enough body to be able to walk over morphs or thinking that, thinking just some ancestor and then put it in the wake. I do like the weight coming in. Get grindy. Yes, good. Wow. <laughs> Absolutely. Can we draw like debilitating injury? I think that would make right. the hand perfect. Because we do like, you know, courtyard, go, planes, uh chief of the scale. I think I would want a, a f like literally the the the, the uh, raiders. I think that's actually what I would want on four here. Like kite seal freebooter. No, no, or raiders wake. Raiders wake. Gotcha. I should have. Yeah, pump the mentor to a three three gives us a token. Whatever. Is this the perfect hand? Not necessarily. This could this hand could easily get demolished. You never know. We're not a, we're not a linear deck. Oh, oh shit. god! Well, monastery mentor plus a flashback card sounds pretty sweet. So, yeah, maybe this is maybe this is the perfect hand. Never mind the, <laughs> the pack pedal. Instant attack. <laughs> Just body check them. You don't have to if you don't want it, but. What do we have? Could be a debilitating injury. Could Boom. be two free damage. <laughs> so I didn't play Blood Crypt on one, which has the possibility of costing us a little bit of life on turn four if we need to play Cast Out. Um, hey, hey, that little bit of life it costs us is going to come right back when, I, when we play our big angel. <laughs> She's got to play the long game with this this cat. It's good. Fine, you get to know. Our hand's dumb. Okay, what's the choice? Good luck. Is it Crater's Claws? <laughs> good luck. Oh my god, they left... Just cast Out? Huh. You're afraid of Cast Out? Do you want to just edict their guy? 
we get a token and attack for a whole bunch. Like, I admit, he's not the greatest guy in the whole world, but considering the advantage it gives us and how he blocks our smaller guys basically forever. Yeah, this was why I was super happy to have the Edict, because it easily answers right. that 04. So, I think that is a reasonable choice. The choice to <coughs> Edict. <that. coughs> Excuse me. Is it something that dies to Crater's Claws? I because... will kill any morph they play. <laughs> Goodbye, Ruth. Like I, I will, I will murder the shit out of any morph you have. Um. Yeah. Because if it's Bane of the Living. It could be Bane of the Living. Riptide Survivor. The Beats! Welcome to Vintage! Eight, five, six, seven on Chainer's Edict flashback? Yeah, seven on Chainer's Edict flashback. I mean, honestly, that means we're not upset to draw another land, frankly. Holy shit! Sure. Damage done at this point. Like, what if we had a spell? Well, we don't, but we get to just chip on in. Like, fine, go to one. <laughs> Come up with a sweeper or four blockers or something. I don't know. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Five mana removal spell on Men Monastery Mentor after it's made two tokens is not enough. So, yep. yes. Heck, even um, even Infest wouldn't have been enough because our guy was a 2-3. Yes. All right. Okay. Um, looking at anything else. Yeah, Haunted Dead versus Removal. Haunted Dead is a consideration. Because, it I mean, it makes a flyer, right? Yeah, it makes and a it's kind of hard to get rid of in a permanent sense. Yeah. Again, anything we don't want. The problem here is that there's a lot of cards I want now that we've already made our first sideboard. Mm. Um... Just taking a look. I don't know. Yeah, like there's, it's all pretty marginal. I think we, uh, I think we're in a good spot. Okay. They've got a lot of card draw removals, counter spells, but the problem is their creatures don't match, and that's our our strength, right? Like, their creatures are morphs, and they have strong abilities, but expensive abilities. Right. So if they're able to like plant their O four get up to Ixodron and stuff, we're probably not in it. Mm-hmm. Ooh, yes, please. That looks pretty dope. Could, like... We could do whatever we want. <laughs> I'm likely gonna lead with Mardu Skull Hunter. Yeah, unrated. I don't mind that. Just so that then we get like, yeah, our choice of a ration foremost or monetary mentor. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, mentor on three into Raider's Wake on four or mastery plus something else on four. Pretty good strong start. The riddle form. If I draw a better two, I would like that. Well, all right. I, my hope was like Chief of the Edge or something like that, but I will literally just play Skull Hunter on two. Sometimes we have Chief of the Edge in our deck, do we? Or Chief of the Shield, Chief of the whatever the the, the other one is, or, or... Scale, maybe. Scale. 
you have to you have to weigh it. Yeah, because he's he's got the bigger butt. Oh um, boy! Ooh, the riddle form beats. Okay. Does riddle form have another ability other than like prowess become a three three? Scry for three. Okay. Hmm. That's kind of neat. Yeah, three to scry one. Got it. So, hey. <laughs> Let's make some war. Here's the beatdown. You thought you were trading three for two, but you're in fact trading three <laughs> for four. Because we have a, yep. have a good little guy here. Discard of the master because that's a pretty easy discard. It's very like combo dependent. This is a card you want for like a late game, like continuous flipping of an Afeto uh creature up. Right. Murder's cut on our Murder. Okay. Okay. Fine. The hope here is that we draw three, three out enables their guy. That's fine. The hope is that we draw um, untapped land for Raiders Wake. If not, we just play Monastery Mentor or uh... yeah, I think Monastery Mentor because we actually have a okay. Yep, 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 yep. Land is what we wanted there, though. Yeah, I, I'm surprised. Ordinarily, it's like, oh no, we. Drawing these too many lands, and now here we have we have, a, we have about like the right three amount. different monosyncs in our hand. <laughs> and... <laughs> yeah. So they're going to be hitting their land drops again because they did play a draw two, so they're not going to be like missing anything like that. My hope is that this is a five mana kill spell on Monastery Mentor. Tassiger. Hey. I still think I'm Raiders waking here. Hmm. So the choices are Raiders wake, high sentinels, mastery of the unseen plus herald of inoffensa, Abzan falconer plus herald of inoffensa. Yeah. Any of mastery, Abzan falconer, and herald of inoffensa alone, yeah. and also passing. So the thing is, Wake will hit them for two. We'll lose our skill under, but we'll get a creature back. Kind of like that. And like, I feel like they've they, like three cards in hand. This is the time I want to snipe something out. Yeah. Do we even have to attack? I mean, we could just. Uh, you have to do the raid for the discard. Well, yeah, but the enchantment sticks around. If you want to, like, that's fine. I don't mind. Yeah, I, I, I think I'm willing to trade this creature for a card in their hand and two life. Which I'll basically do, because, you know, now we've attacked, they discard a card, and now they discard a card, they'll lose two life. And then, like, we can do our monk token next turn. You may cast this. How do they cast that, Jen? <laughs> you may cast this. By? Mm. By discarding a card. Mm. <laughs> okay, so that's getting Mastery of the Unseen out of Oh no, our Mastery! They also can't really afford to attack with Tassiger. Okay, well, no more surprises, I guess. It's fine. One card left in hand. Pain costs. Losing to life. <laughs> to turn on real form. Vesuvian shapeshifter. Yeah. Okay, if Tasker comes in, I will chump block it with a 1 1 because, uh, like, Freebooter is. 
Think we can attack over that with Monastery Mentor? Okay, so. <laughs> Sadly, that exiles. <laughs> If we want them to have oh, an oh, instead of the discard. If we want them to have an empty um, hand, though. Yeah, I mean, well, you could also like make them exile a creature. They either exile Tassiger, who's the hugest, or they give us a card back, and we can still play Harold Van Offens in the same turn, and we get a one-one. I like that. And like that makes attacking with our two-two monk pretty free. Right, and we get a new monk to replace. Right. Like, okay. Hey, we, hey you, what you gonna do? <laughs> like, they can't exile Tassiger here. Yeah. Yeah, good choice. Our Monosynx. Hey, you want to discard one of those cards? <laughs> do I want to double attack here, or do I just want to throw monk in? Okay, so double attack means giving them the Monastery Mentor and dealing two damage. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's a good trade. I don't want, like, two more life out of them for the for Monastery Mentor. Like, we're, we have Mastery of the Unseen in hand now. If we draw a land, we can Mastery plus Abzan Falconer yeah. or Mastery plus Outlast a guy and get yet another, like, easy chump attacker. Like, yeah, and just keep these chump <laughs> our, attackers Our chump going. attackers are going to, like, Murder them. <laughs> Raiders wake, baby. Okay, so they're going to be... Paying Just four. Oh, they're activating Tassiger. No, they're not. Yeah. Yes, they are. Ho! Oh. oh, shit, Grandma. I think you can just have Reach of Shadows. Well, do, do I care about Grandma? This doesn't do anything. Well, that's the thing that they can play this turn, right? Right, but it's, like, almost irrelevant. Well, we don't care about that, surely, but, you know, they might be feeling the heat. Well, also, it eludes on hit. Yeah? Oh, let him have Grandma. Yeah. Yeah. Here. There's also the comedy option of a Zuvin Shapeshifter, I guess, but I don't want them to have a Monastery Mentor. Yeah, that's the reason. And Reach of Shadows is their full turn, but it gives them a riddle form active. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, we want to draw an untapped land. That! Ho, oh, ho, ho! Bold! No blocks, I think, on I that. I like the boldness. I don't want to block it. Like, <laughs> I don't necessarily disagree. I think they have to make a play like this in order to win. Well, because they win through Riddle Form plus Tassiger hitting us again, right? Like, yeah. that's their... Like, they draw some kind of damaging spell. Or, like, like get rid of our blockers. Yeah. So let's do this first for... We have multiple infinite man machines. We have three infinite man machines. <laughs> oh, for the okay, for this infinite man machines for the sake of chumping. Well, Do I activate Harold? Rather than Absent Falconer? Yeah, because then next turn I can play Falconer and then it flies. Yeah, that's good. It's not like the Harold token has haste or anything, right?
Okay. Good choice. <laughs> yeah, it's not discard for each attacker, but we don't really... That's fine. <laughs> so this puts him to four. It is two damage for every discard, regardless of what that discard is. So they need to remove both blockers here. They don't have double black for Bane of the Living to do it, and even if they did, Tasker would be too small. They need like yeah, it would a, be like they need they need two different kill spells. They're like a kill on a bounce. Or like or, a, or like um Sea God's or, Revenge yeah. style like blowout. Yeah. Okay. okay. They don't have any of those things and they didn't want to show us. Good talk. We draw the we drew the correct amount of lands ultimately. Wow. Yeah, I understand where you're coming from on the 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 block there, gnome. And if I would, if we were going to make that choice, I probably would have just gotten rid of the herald because again, we have like six types of infinite bodies. If we had known we were going to draw the land and be able to double spell, then it was like a 100 percent to chump, I think. But yeah. Okay, five lands, blood soaked champion. One more land gets us Lin Vala. <laughs> allows us to damage ourselves. And how, how 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 strong is just Lin Vala? Right? Is that what this hand's asking? I, I think I think the hand is asking how strong is just blood soaked champion, champion and perfect mana. <laughs> I like perfect mana a lot, but uh, we we're dead on a top ten that has any more than one land on it. Uh, are we on the play? They are on the play. That means we can log into this. Ouch. Okay. It's a pretty good five. Probably just get rid of like third land and the champ here. I guess we keep the champ. Third land for certain because his hand doesn't need it. And then. I like Anak Bonkin too much. Let's get rid of the champ. No need to soak him. Yeah. Not on turn one. Well. Um, again, the problem with keeping a five lander is that if, the, again, top ten, if that's like two lands on top, we are in such a poor positioning against anything and if they're anything aggressive like look we have we have like all live cards here yeah oh the one that we just drew so we definitely get to play a game of magic yes there is a possibility with that first hand that we just don't we, we don't get to play anything at all and they play their if it deals one damage to you bear sure okay. i'll play a creature with three toughness <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> <coughs> sure. The remorse. Please hit the foremost. Of. Come on, we're gonna top deck that planes if you don't choose it. The debilitating injury. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, now that they've done that, you are going to draw planes. Yeah, whatever. I hope you're happy. Oop, never mind. I lied. Oh, uh, I think I want to return the favor. Yeah, we are technically ahead on board, so trying to get ahead on, like, card. That's good. And Doomfall doesn't even cost us life like it did them. See? So they missed a land drop as well. Head of the curve. I want perfect information, which is the most What relevant. are we most afraid of? Can't play it, can't play it, can't play it, can't play it, weapon surge. What on earth? So they're a go wide strategy, I'm guessing. Yeah. From the from the weapon surge, frankly. Um hmm. I don't have any strong feelings about any of these. 
chief because we can't kill it with what's in hand. Like ankle shaker costs five, and they don't have the mana for that. Adam and Will's a trick they can't use. Yeah. This costs four. If they don't have creatures, this doesn't do anything. Yeah, let's take the chief. Okay. Only we can be the chief. Only we will I help have chief the them in multiple directions. We'll take away their chief and have multiple chiefs of our own. That'll show them. Yeah, overload means that it'll be all creatures get the first strike. So they're gonna leave back. No, they're gonna keep coming in. Okay, I thought they might like leave back the weapon search. I'm not going to spend our debilitating injury until they leave it back. <laughs> okay. And obviously we can't block because they have a weapon surge. <laughs> Owned. Ha. <laughs> ah. Disowned <laughs> ancestor. <sighs> Their hand is just garbage because they're off mana. They kept a really shaky seven, huh? <laughs> Interesting how things mirror. <laughs> wow, we would have had a really good game of Magic. Where yeah. no one does anything for many turns. Well, true to your word, they did leave it back. And there's the injury. Heads up play for us, hand on the table. Yeah. Put its hand on your hand. Third color is here. Ooh, they could cast Adamant Will. Yeah, Flame Rush Rider is four to come in. Wow. That's kind of a card. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hmm, how do I want to attack into that? Like, just Chief of the Scale, Chief and Inok Bondkin. <clears throat> so, if it's just Chief, they might let it through? Because they get to make a guy on attack and we can't block because they we we know they have weapon surge. Right. They also have Adam and Will. Like we're yeah. gonna lose a combat if we I, I kinda wanna attack with both and That sounds good to me. Like they're at seven. We can keep the pressure on. They have some incentive to trade with the Bonkin because it can kind of get out of hand. Yeah. We also have open mana and a secret card. I'm going to three is dangerous. I'm super happy with them making a trade. Turns off weapon surge and adamant will again. Get to just kind of doof around with our own ancestor. Yep. Fourth land that lets them not rush this because this is still. Yeah, that's a double oh, red rush. So it doesn't haste on its normal. All right. They... Oh. All well. right. Can we draw one of our removal spells, please? I mean, you got what you wished for. Just. 
Okay, I'm gonna be very. I'm gonna be specific. <laughs> it's like a mountain. <laughs> yeah, you know, that can get twisted into the mountain that costs us two life. I know. And that would basically be fine. They're deeming worthy. Wow. It's a pretty good spell. I can't really attack though. Attack. I'm gonna go to like, two. Yeah, like that would bring them to two. Okay, here it is. You're not attacking. Get on with it. Yeah, I don't buy it for a second that you're coming in at me. Thank you. <laughs> Ugh, does body checking to rob them of a car do anything? We give us two attackers next turn, although they're probably going to have. I don't know, something. Can't really attack. I kind of want to outlast this. Or... Okay. It's good. It's fine. Because, like, even if they, like, block and pump, we're like, okay, our guy's like a 4 8. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put the body on the board, though. Yeah, let the bodies hit the board, as they say. Mm hmm. But see, okay, I get you. I get you. The outlast gets us up to ferocious size. The big reason I want the outlast on there is it gets us over the toughness that they have, so they have to spend it. Sure, I take two if that thing hits me. More importantly, first strike, death touch. Yikes! They've cracked the code. Okay. I don't think this is going to get outlasted past that point. Oh, sure. The reason I want this on five is that it, you know, is a lethal strike. Bolster X, where X is the number of tamped creatures you control. Okay. They're going to attack for Grave Void Marauder. Oh. Okay. Hmm. Three in the air. Uh, we win if we draw Falconer now. That's kind of cool. Let's open up a new avenue. New lethal threats. I like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Chief ain't it, as they say. Mm hmm Sadly. I believe we have one turn until we lose this game. Like, we have a top deck. Like, they could just play out their Flame Rush Rider. Okay, that doesn't do too terribly much. Yep. We can draw a card off this. Mm -hmm. So let's kill their general. Well... Dun, 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 dun. It does not have to destroy the card. Okay. The reason I'm not just targeting their high sentinels is that they have this adamant will. Mm -hmm. But going on the, the general here. Like we'll the, at least draw the card from the thing having a counter. Yeah, it doesn't have any like extra text that says that it needs to destroy the creature. <clears throat> Ooh. 
food or to eat their weapon surge. Maybe chump against their big flyer. Yeah. <laughs> if they're on foul. Oh. Oh, gross. Well, that greatly complicates matters. <laughs> no, they. We were supposed to draw the falconer, not them. Yeah. Hold on. What the heck? And I gotta like do this here quick. Yeah, re restore a little sanity to that situation. I hate that this card reveals and then looks. Like on MTG, it double sees the cards for no reason. Oh, weird. If they play Falconer, we chump high sentinels, we have one turn. Also, if we, that happens. If they play Falconer. Okay. Hmm. Push Full wall. Press, huh? All right. Um. This is interesting, because if they don't kill me, if we can just hit them with this own ancestor, it's over. And their hand is three drop, five drop, five drop, so... Maybe? Well, I mean, they, they can just play Abzan Falconer, right? And if we draw nothing, then our attack is no good, because they can jump with Falconer, and then they win. So I, I don't think that's, like, completely unreasonable. What's their trick? Shit! Ah, well, we cannot win. Okay, that's, uh... Talk. <laughs> glad we have this conversation. <laughs> and see, that's the thing. Like, if they were at five, they play just the Abzan Falcon and go, we murder his cut, kill them with the... Yeah, anyway. I, I get it. So, that was, that was, <laughs> that was our bowl to five versus their seven Woo. keep, but we ran out of, like, basically we ran out of uh, dice before they uh, saw their, you know, third, fourth land. Yeah. Poof. That, that lifelink trick, that lifelink death touch trick is incredible. All right, what do we want here? What's bad... Freebooter had enough targets. Our removal's quite good. Do we want like a something like Mastery and the Unseen yeah, here again? I don't, I don't know. I don't feel like Raiders Wake it's is tough. what we want against them. They don't. Like at this point, I'm just kind of hoping that they, um, they. Like their mana betrays them like it basically did last time. All right. All right. Let's get a sweet. Let's get a hand. Okay. Mana has not betrayed us. So, well, not yet anyway. Yeah, and, I mean, even if it does, like, sure. You got we it. Five boys. cards out of our seven card hand. And this is six. And this is more seven. Than one. Yeah. The hate. Mardu hate blade, not as tough as a cat. Mm hmm But can attack up, unlike some cats. It's like the freest attack in the world. I sure as hell ain't blocking right now. Love to draw third land right now. Even if we don't, still like our hand. It's nice. 
Okay. I almost want to just get that bond canned up like next move. Like so that our falconer is oh, there's their Okay, bit of a roll reversal from last game. Yeah, let's see if we've got of action. How bad's their action look? Uh two three makes things unable to block. Part. Sure. Hey Blade comes in for one. Yeah. So I can block the Smelt Ward Minotaur with our Chief of the Scale. If they go for a trick, that's okay. Our Kingdom for that third land, though. Both Falconer and Monastery Mentor completely changed the texture of what we currently have going on. Well, there goes Einok Bondkin. In the exact same manner. Deemed worthy yet again, yeah. Yeah. Harsh. That means I've, they can't attack. Oh, oh. Here's your third land. I'm thinking the mentor here. Sure. I know it opens us up, but like the one of the ways we're going to win this is by overcoming the board with the mentors. You I mean, know. Next turn we draw a blank piece of cardboard, we could still debilitating injury plus blood soak champion, and that's kind yeah. of cool. And even like debilitating their two three is okay. Yes. Like, what are they going to do with it? Like, make our creatures not block? Okay, we'll get more creatures <laughs> with our Monastery Mentor. Okay, okay. roasted. That's, Fine. that's how it goes. They were going to roast whatever <coughs> it was. It's not like we were going to, like, Mentor plus another spell in the same turn for a million turns from now. So that was just going to be the Falconer again. Yep, and then their follow-up is... Double white for no. If they make me discard, I can just throw the bug so champion. Oh good. Oh damn. For a yeah, second I was really right. happy to see that. Alright. Falconer get in looks like a line. Yep. Leaving back at two three. Like we did last time. Yep. Still five cards in hand for our opponent. We've both been missing land drops, so both of us have a you know full grip of gas, as it were. Yikes! I think I have to trade with that. And they know it, because I can't just leave this around. Yeah. Two one isn't too bad as far as a freebie goes. Oh, there's something. Wanna get Ara Shin down? Do I wanna get High Sentinels? Kinda like Ara Shin again, like I feel like we're gonna we have get to like a Russian plus the attack and also blood soak champion. Yeah. I like it. And I can't Wait. just here. Yeah. 
And like That's... even them like wiping away some creatures or whatever is kind of good for us too because then we can get a cheaper murderous cut out of the deal. Yeah. And we kind of want High Sentinels to be our final ace the hole. You know, if they're going to play Flame Slash, Dragon's Breath. Well, I found Butcher the... of the Horde! Okay, that thing hastes on a creature sacks. They're probably just going to bring it in right now. However, that that's our murderous cut. Yeah, we're, we're going to murder that dude. I wonder if they'll lifelink it. Get rid of the Hate Blade. Get a bunch of life. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay. Okay. That's just injury plus cut together, right? Yeah. Yeah. We don't actually mm -hmm. need to um think you don't need injury. Yeah, we might not need injury. So like I get to attack with Arish and Foremost, mm -hmm. which has three toughness. Mm -hmm. And Blood Soaked Champion mm -hmm. for eight. Bring back leave back Chief of the Scale. If they block and kill Blood Soaked Champion, I mm -hmm. think I actually would Del four, kill this for one, then place high sentinels. That sounds good. Let's do that. So, so hand off our double strike. Okay, I think from here I'm just gonna murderous cut this thing. I'll do it in such a way that makes them wonder. What could they have? <coughs> this has three toughness, so we couldn't like injury it, plus, you know, like, that is out of the question. All right, ooh, I like this. They're at nine. We've been attacking for eight. So that fetch does represent a meaningful point of damage. Because, you know, two, two, double strike, two, two, double strike. So all of a sudden, now we're asking harder and harder questions. All right, what is their line? Again, they have five live cards, but I think a lot of their hand is expensive. Death touch. I can just turn that off. Yeah, I can just turn that yeah. off. I like that notion. So it means I want an untapped land here. Um, okay, I like them casting another thing so that they're not like on... Okay. Mountain. Mountain. I see. Okay. I'm gonna say something like this ends today. Should have been for half our life total. Yep. I dig. There's your untapped land. All right, so we just get to play both our cards here. Um, chip in with... So if we injury their guy, mm -hmm. swing all out. They'll go to two. They... Target warriors, yeah. they'll block one of the double strikers. Right. They, would, they would have to...
You actually kind of have to do that anyway. Yeah, it's just right? a matter of if like I... Even without the debilitating injury. Yeah. It's just a matter of, like, do we... Which card do we want to trade? Is it the... You know, the material on board or the thing in our hand? I feel like the material on board matters more, and I'm actually thinking about leaving Chief of the Scale back to block so that they can't, like, Hadouken here, like, just out of nowhere. They have shown, like, the Flame Rush Rider would be a, a reasonable way for them to pull that out. Hmm. And one of the things that makes me fine giving up two points of damage is, again, our, our damage has been in fours. So... We could die to arrows, just arrow storm out of our opponent, that'd be sweet. Love me a good arrow storm. They could have volcano blow out themselves. Para pump spells. Here it is. Last turn. Yeah, this is this is it. <laughs> the game does not go past this position. They either have a way to kill us. A relevant card. Whoa! Mystic Monastery. Looks like they're playing just that. Just for the red-white, do you think? Yeah, I think that's probably just for the... Their deck seems too heavy in on these colors that they're probably like, no, I will... Like, I'd be willing to play that just so that I have another land to hit, um... Volcano Blood, right? You know, like... God. Now we just have to sit here for a little while. Do they have two spells plus a pump spell? Do they have nothing of the sort? Okay. Wow. Because if they had, like, you know, Adamant Will style trick plus, uh, you know, another instant. All right, final game. Any changes we want here? Both of us were on some pretty um, hefty stuff there. We're, we're similar decks. We both have to get our hands dirty. I don't think there are easy answers. No, I don't. <laughs> the Wall of Omens. Putting Wall of Omens would be like admitting we're the control player, right? I'd be scared to do that. I don't think it even does that much. <laughs> Blocks and draws a card. Let's ride. We already have an 04 that can attack. Oh, uh, geez. Not this. No. I can't. Cycle cast out into the swamp. Then. <laughs> Arse. This is the same looking. All right, let's. Okay. Okay. Yeah, good talk. The fives have it. All right, so hope their mana is very bad and they don't have a kill spell for Monastery Mentor, basically, right? Like, yeah, they just have a bunch of like two cost two twos, so we get to kill one with debilitating injury. That is the start of their mana looking bad. Yeah, frankly. that's the start of their mana being kind of poor here, which is nice. They did not have even one okay. swamp in the last game. Okay, that's... That's the start of their mana being fine. Okay. Minotaur. Nothing. Okay. Oh my god. Oh, our hero mountain, huh? Alright, I think we still just need to throw out the mentor, though, right? Like... I can try and wait on it for more value. We are we kinda, two turns away from like. You know, the, no, they're, we're not under pressure, right? So, okay, sure. Why not? 
don't they're, mind it even they're holding for kill spells like mad. That's their hand. It's a bunch of just stupid kill spells. So let's just wait. Parting thoughts that guy instead of the injury. The idea being that have we seen anything that uh, out of, we kind of have seen things out of them that have yeah. counters. Well, like, my thoughts is here next turn we get to mentor plus injury and presumably they're going to play something that injury is good against again my worry is that so good my worry is that they have they've shown us butcher of the horde the the f three four flyer and mm -hmm. like a couple other large creatures that if we okay. don't okay that's fine like i would feel you know if, if all of a sudden it goes planes butcher that would be like whoops then they'd have small flyer. I, I do understand, you know, it's like, okay, we want to yeah. make our five. The yeah, fact that they missed a land drop. Because right we already didn't play the, the guy that we played. Yeah. Again, the fact that they missed a land drop again means they might just not be able to make a forward play. Mm. <laughs> All right. Which, uh, which creature do we want to offer up to their removal? This, because on next turn we could, like, mentor plus. Also, this yeah. asks for some pretty high removal. Right. The fewer cards at the, the three mana costs that deal with this. Okay. Wasn't an instant murder. The moment it gets a counter, they can't flame slash it. A morph. Oh, baby. Mentor parting thoughts it? Or do just what it is. Or maybe like honestly I mean, chief of the scale and put a counter on chief of the scale. I like that better. Save the save the mentor parting thoughts for a more worthy and bigger creature. Do it right away so that we get a little extra damage. Four is a lot more than three. So even if that's Bane. Oh, no, they have, that's Bane of the Living? No. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. what? Minus one. Okay, so they're on Butcher Mana. They're on, you know, they're, they've finally full fixed. But now this is outside of a, like, Flame Slash range. It basically is, like, true removal or bust. Roast only hits non-flyers, right? Correct. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. And Ooh. here's the reason for the season. Mm. Oh my god, do you want to, like, get gr super greedy and wait for them to, like, <laughs> put a counter on their morph? <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to push damage as much as I okay. can right now. That's, that's a fine target for parting thoughts. Yeah, so let's mentor. Parting thoughts. Hey, check this out. Lock. Oh, okay. I guess it's not Ruth. Yeah. Or they have no black cards to reveal. <laughs> it is Ruth if they just have no black cards. Cycling deem worthy to kill Monastery Mentor. Man, Deem Worthy has been such a buster. Uh, that is game. Like, four cost. Because guess what this cost. token has? <laughs> no, a one drop! <sighs> fine, it's not game. Okay, fine. It's anti-game. What if we draw another kill spell? Do we even have another kill spell? Yeah, we have like a... a... like cast out, but that's too much. Volcano! <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have another kill spell, it turns out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, fine. Uh, thanks, thanks, Dome. Praise me or be damned! Thanks, Dome. Praise <laughs> <to that. laughs> 
Thank Thank, you. Thanks, thanks for the volcano blowout, everybody. Thanks for popping in. <laughs> After I made several called shots and didn't get anything. Like, uh, there were like eight turns running across multiple games where you we know, could draw that in one. You know, I think my favorite part of that is how many times did we have, uh, like, we had the volcano blowout in our hands. And it's like, where's our red? Where's that red? Where's the red? Where's our red? Where's the red? <laughs> Like, we just didn't have it. And then finally, the last game, the final game, there it is. Like, to be clear, we could have drawn any number of things and sealed oh. the game right there with them tapped out with yeah. two blockers and so on. Uh, cast out and murderous cut were both alive, uh, as well as um, uh, uh, make your team fly. The the three two the oh, two three. Oh, the Abzan Falconer. Because we would have who is so good but never works. That's yes, the guy. <laughs> that one. All right, let's go ahead and open up some a little bit of uh, rewards packs. Oh boy, it's a common. Anyway, let's open the real rewards pack. Ooh, it's flicker form. What a fun card. Oh boy. Flicker form was in a set that had a bunch of auras that entered the battlefield and did things. Yeah. Did you know that Ravnica original had an enchantment sub theme? Incredible with, you know, uh old you know, old friends like uh where is I, I didn't want to spell Galvantic, all right. Uh What's the one that like entered the battlefield and just drew two cards? Flight of Fancy. Like Here it is. Yeah, Flight of Fancy. But yeah, this is the one that you, know, you played a lot of is for the. Yeah. Uh, but you also had things like, um, Quantity Zero, the Mage Marks, um, and there was. Even things like um, there's too many drakes in the world, aren't there? There are way too many drakes. But yeah, you had things later on that was like a two-two flying with protection from enchantments, and Here it is. there there was a lot of stuff like that. Drake familiar. Yeah, Drake familiar that would like let you bounce your enchantments. It was, it was a real thing. Yeah. Anyway, that's why flicker form exists. Yes. All right. Anyway, that was nine full games. That were those were some intense ones. Like our that last was, that was as fatiguing as like a five match league. <sighs> yeah, I I I really really have I hold this cube in very high regards. Um, to me, it's up there with the original legendary cube, uh, as far as one that is trying to. Like, it has a stated purpose, and I feel like it does that purpose very well. You know, the, 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 you know it, it, it hits that, you know. I, we fought two morph opponents and uh, a mirror match of yeah. warrior tribal. And then well, last time we fought a bunch of, like, you know, prowess decks and, you know, like, mirror matches in that way. There's a lot of, like, th you know, what makes cons cons is still around. I think the only one that doesn't fully come out to bear is like the ferocious plan but then again like teamer wasn't really about ferocious it was just about big creatures <laughs> i am i am blown away by how they keep trying to make ferocious happen mm -hmm. it's it's been a sub theme across like a minor sub theme in some places across the last like four sets yeah in, in standard that's like two straight years where they've try been trying to like revive for this <laughs> real thing, and it just guys don't <laughs> just yeah. leave it. Okay? I, I I think it like really what it, what teamer to be is is just big. That you know when we saw Sagu Mahler, um, <laughs> well like sixth pick, it's like oh, what? <laughs> anyway, oh that was that was it. Thank you for the stream. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, everybody, for showing up to the stream. Rather, thank you, Kaz, for being here. Oh, I had to, I had to duck in after you yeah. had already solidified your deck, so that I couldn't like ruin your. Early <laughs> day. Thank, thank you for joining. It was a blast. Thank you, Numbit, for the yeah. jump in there. Thank you, everybody else. 
uh, for, for, for joining. If you liked this, uh, you can always follow. See when I go live with things like this. It ends up being 7 Central on weekdays and uh, kind of more odds and ends on Sundays. Uh, tomorrow is more Final Fantasy 13 2, uh, which is going to continue. And and another little, another little point in that, mm-hmm. by the way, you have yet to get to my favorite part of the game. Okay. Yeah. So I, I hope There's that more. you enjoyed as much as I did. There's more to come. Also, oh, yes. it won't be this week, but uh, because I, I have other things going on on Thursday, but Halo 1 finally did show up on Steam. So me and Numbit will find a time to continue uh, that stuff. Anyway, that's going to be it for tonight. Thank you all for joining. Follow for cool. Follow. No, don't follow for Cool Skulls and Slimes. Subscribe for Cool Skulls and Slimes. Or just watch and have fun. Anyway, good night, everybody.